C2 Lawson. Okay, do you have any tips for organizing all of your reference material for projects? Yes, I do. Um, there are two ways I utilize reference material, digitally and physically. And so for the physical reference, um, I, you know, I keep my, this is a confidential job, so I can't actually show you the actual pictures that I'm replicating here, doing some work for hire, but um, I keep all of my reference photos out, but also all of my drawings, I keep those all ex uh, extant um, so that, yeah, there we go. There's some other stuff. Um, so there's that. There's the physical thing. And once I begin a project, all that paperwork gets put together and sort of ends up spreading out, but, but staying with it. I keep all the drawings with the reference material. When I'm all the way done with the project, this usually goes into a folder onto my bookshelf. And I've got, a, yeah, I've got binders full of this kind of stuff, of physical uh, pictures of stuff going back decades. The thing is, is I don't like using my laptop for reference in the shop. First of all, it's a terrible thing to do to a laptop to bring it into a space like this. This is a, metal dust everywhere. It's awful. It's an awful thing to do. And many of my old laptops <laughs> are not even worth giving to somebody because they're so abused. Uh, oh, I got some packages. Um, so I don't like using uh, physical I don't like using the laptop to do digital reference retrieval here in the cave. I print stuff out. The other thing I do when I print stuff out is I often print it out one-to-one -one scale. And that is, that's just gigantic for me in being able to solve measurement problems and scaling problems and, and, and like, yeah. I love, so I do a ton of printing stuff out. And on jobs, sometimes I'll work on a job all day with some reference material. I'll go home and look at my reference material again and print out some more sheets and come back in with more sheets the next day um, just to make sure I'm really being able to see everything. And there's just, there's no equivalent to looking at it physically as opposed to digitally. And don't get me wrong, I've certainly held my calipers up to the screen of my computer. Um, but again, hardened steel, next to the screen of my computer, that's idiotic. I shouldn't be doing it. Um, so that's the physical media. The digital media, uh, I've talked about this in the past. It's worth going over again. Um, at the beginning of a project, there's no organization. There's, sing there's simply a folder. Uh, so uh, it might be, uh, you know, years ago, I got obsessed with Nagra spy recorders, little reel-to-reel -reel recorders. So when I get obsessed with the thing, I start doing two things. I gather images of it and I gather information about it. The images I throw into a folder and I use Adobe's um, navigation program, Bridge. Adobe Bridge, one of the greatest pieces of software I've ever used, seriously, um, because it works off of the finder. So you make adjustments in the Adobe Bridge folder and those adjustments are done in real life on your files. I can't deal with the philosophy of Apple Photos where you're adjusting a file structure that doesn't apply to real life. It only applies to the program. That makes me crazy. That makes me feel crazy because I've had those programs crash and I've lost all those folders, kept all the photos, lost all the photos, photos and I just thought never again. So I use Adobe Bridge for the organization and you know, as computers get faster and Adobe software gets faster. And I, I was upset when they went to a subscription model. Now I'm the happiest customer in the world. I think I'm saving lots of dough using Adobe products on a subscription model than when I used to pay for it or beg for it. Um, uh, so Bridge is how I store that. And then the information about a project, I use Evernote. Um, and I've been using Evernote for years. They hired Jamie and I to do some stuff for them way back in the day. Uh, and I'm glad they're still around because I really like their program. Uh, it is a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it stays perfectly updated, whether it's my laptop or my phone. So any piece of information I have in, in, in Evernote, I can retrieve on any device that I have, which is phenomenal. Um, more than that, I've never lost any data through Evernote. I mean, I do a simple, their search function is highly robust. I found everything I was looking for, yeah. Um, so I start gathering information, I start 
gathering websites where I find information and I start gathering pictures. That's the first pass. Then I end up with a kind of a big dump of an Evernote document that's just got a bunch of random stuff in it. And I've got a folder with maybe 50, 75 images. Once I get to 50 to 75 images, it's time to start refining. So then I'll look at Bridge. And one of the things I like about Adobe Bridge is I can look at all of the pictures in a folder at once in any size I kind of want to. Um, so I will look at those and I'll think, okay, what are the categories that are naturally occurring to me? Well, there's the outside, there's the inside, there's this attachment, there's that attachment. And I start coming up with my names for things and I start making subfolders. And then those subfolders get subfolders as I need more information or as I increase my brain's ability to hold all the parts of this object in my head. That is essentially truly what I'm doing is I'm helping my brain hold the totality of the, brid, of the build all at once. Once I have that, then everything else is sort of cutting parts to size. And it's never, it's never perfect. It's never a perfect translation. But yeah, for the most part, it's, it, it's using the computer and using the, 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 the printouts to kind of give my brain the most scope and, 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 and uh, the widest, uh, to give my brain the most amount of information it can hold at any given time. And that increases, right? Like, I, I, I love this when uh, a, like a Star Wars helmet shows up in a trailer uh, that's not Star Wars related, and you go to the RPF and somebody on the RPF will tell you precisely who made that helmet. And they're looking at all these little subtleties about the eyes and the bulges and the color of the smoke glass and the way the stickers are on the side. And they have these refined eyes for witnessing and seeing tiny changes. But that's no different really than like a car enthusiast being able to tell you whether that's a kit car Shelby or the real thing. They're they're attuned to tiny little increments of differences. I love getting my mind to that spot. What was the original question? Uh, let's see here. Oh, oh, we get some live questions from the, oh, so I totally forgot to check that. Here we go. Um, Joshua Martin says, I've been inspired in my organization by Tom Sachs's art. Yeah, hard same. Uh, do you find the arrangement of tools to satisfy artistic expression as well as practical use? Yes, completely. Um, totally. And I think we're... Okay, let's talk about the MILF for a second because... Uh, 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 a friend of mine talked about my setup of the mill as like a fighter pilot's cockpit. And I really like that, that metaphor. It's absolutely that. Um, it's a fighter pilot's cockpit in that everything I need, again, it's first order retrievability is within my grasp or within a quick grasp. Um, there's an aspect to the way I've stored things that is, I'm just finding the most efficient way to keep it within arm's reach. But I am also really interested in the aesthetics. Because if it's neat to look at, if my eye likes looking at it, I'll use it more. The aesthetics aren't, I've certainly run into people, Jamie Heineman, who think of aesthetics almost entirely as like a secondary notion and it's pandering in terms of tool layout. Uh, I mean, Jamie's not, you know, immune to aesthetics at all. Uh, this shop with stuff up on the walls and all that stuff. That's all him. He's, you know, he, he can design a space. But when it comes to tool layout, he's like highly unromantic about it. And I need to have, yeah, the, the aesthetics are, they're a key part of the work process. If, if, yeah, they're a key part of the work process. I'm going to be less inclined to pull something out of an ugly box than a beautiful box. That's totally true. Um, it's a terrific question. And it's a, again, it's a process and it changes over time. Um, I have certainly done things that were neat looking. And then later on, I was like, man, I got to start. I got to stop suffering through this because it looks great, but it, it doesn't behave right. Uh, and then I'll change it.
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.